Hi everyone. In this practice, I will perform some management tasks on our logical standby database. No need to make a copy of them. The data gap configuration specifications are the same as in the logical standby database that we created in practice 2. Its production mode is maximum performance and it uses SQL Plus for managing the data guard configuration. In high level, in this practice, I will demonstrate how to do the following. Skip and unskip object from data guard replication. Use triggers to handle unsupported objects. And finally, change the guard protection in the logical standby database so that it allows read-write operations, but not on the replicated objects. To get our practice ready, using VirtualBox, open the two appliances that we created in the folder Practice2 Logical Standby, and start the appliances, then start their databases and make sure they are available. I have just done that. I have a putty session with white font connected to SRV1 and a putty session with green font connected to SRV2. I didn't start up the database in it, so I will do that just now. The database is up and running in the primary database. I will just start up the standby database. I need also to start the SQL apply process. I will show you now how to skip and unskip an object from data guard replication. I will create a test table in the primary database. Then I will skip it and unskip it back again. Start with unlocking the HR schema, then create the testing table in it, in the primary database. I will insert three rows in that table. Wait for a few seconds and confirm that the table got replicated in the standby database. I need to connect to the standby database first. I will fix this in the practice document. As with all the practice documents in this course, you can download it from the lecture shared resources. So as you can see here, we've got the objects replicated in the standby database. Now I will add this table to a skip role in both the primary database and the logical standby database. I will verify that the skip rule is there. As you see, we have a skip rule for DML and DDL operations on the enames table.
I will add two rows in it in the primary database. Wait for some time and query the table in the standby database. You will notice the inserted rows do not appear in the standby database. As you see, after selecting the total count of rows in enames table for a period of time, it always returns three rows. Remember, this table has five rows at the moment in the primary database. Later, I will reinstantiate the enames table. For that, I need to create a database link in the standby database that is pointed to the primary database. I will delete the skip rule now from the configuration. The version of the document here is showing the code to remove the role from the standby database only. You actually need to remove it from the primary database as well. Again, I will fix this in the document. You would excuse me guys for that. On the standby database, I will reinstantiate the enames table. I will start the SQL apply service. I will now verify that the table is there with its most updated rows. As you see, five rows are there now in the table in the standby database. In the second task of this practice, I will create a table with unsupported data type. Then I will show you how to use the triggers to replicate the changes made on the table to the standby database. As HR user, I will create person user defined data type and persons table. The type will be used by a column in persons table. Then I will create the triggers to handle this table in our data guard configuration. Notice that this simple trigger takes care of only inserted rows. In a production system, you need to modify it to handle deleted and updated rows as well. Verify the objects have been created in the standby database site. I will test the solution now. I will insert a row in the table in the primary database and check if it appears in the standby database or not.
as you see the inserted row has appeared in the table it used to have a single row now it has two rows in the last task of this practice i will configure the standby database to allow read write operations and disallow dml operations against the replicated objects First, I verify that I cannot make DML changes on the hr.employees table. An error is returned when I try to update the table. I will verify the guard property of the primary database and the standby database. It is none in the primary database, which means all read-write operations are allowed by the data guard. It is all in the logical standby database, which means no read-write operation is allowed. I will change the guard property in the standby database to standby. I will verify the effect of this change on the standby database. The HR user is able to create a table, insert some row in it, and drop it. But it cannot still update a replicated object. In conclusion, in this practice, we learned how to skip an object from data guard replication. In real life, you may find some situations where you need to do that. Secondly, we learned how to use the PLSQL triggers to handle unsupported objects. Remember, always consider using EDS as a better solution. If it doesn't support your object, use the trigger solution. Finally, we learned that it is recommended to set the guard property of a logical standby database to standby. As is the case in all the practices, to shut down the system, you just, you just stop the SQL apply, shut down the standby database, shut down the primary database, and finally, as root, shut down the appliances. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next lecture.